in this interview as a small contribution to the International Women's Day. The aim of this project is to give us an opportunity to communicate with inspiration of female leaders within the UN system. We hope this interview can be a, total, can be a tool to empower young women like us who will be inspired and motivated to achieve success by the example of yourself as a role model. This supports the theme of this year's International Women's Day, Equality for Women, means progress for all. We are excited by the opportunity to talk with leading women at the very top of the UN system in order to gain an insight into how they achieve their positions of leadership and learn about their experiences and challenges in doing so. My name is Mia Dyson, I'm 11 years old and I study at Blackheath High Junior School. My name is Eve Giro Sage, I'm 17 years old and I study at Blackheath High Senior School. My name is Thomas Ujiman, I am 11 years old and I study at Blackie High Junior School. My name is Julia Bazia and I am 11 years old and I study at Blackie High Junior School. Oh, wonderful to meet you all. So what? Wonderful to meet you, Uri. So what is a typical working day in the life of Lakshmi Puri and what is your favourite part of the job? Well, I've begun with one of the more favourite parts of my job which is to speak to people, uh, advocate for gender equality and women's rights. And there are many fora for that. Uh, one is, of course, speaking to young people uh, like you, uh, because I think um, we believe that the uh, project for gender equality and women's empowerment is most of all about changing mindsets and also you cannot bring about a transformation in uh, power relations between men and women, boys and girls, unless you begin with boys and girls when you are young. So the favorite part of my uh, interaction and, and advocacy effort is to interact with young people. And so I'm very happy to be here. A typical day, yes, it can, uh, it, it can range from attending diplomatic breakfast meetings, which are actually brainstorming meetings to push an agenda that is very, uh, very dear to me. Uh, in particular, for example, now we are looking to preparing for the once a year global event that takes place called Commission on the Status of Women. Have you heard about it? Have you heard about it? No. Well, it, no, is, <laughs> it is the premier global institution between four to 6,000 women and some men from around the world attend this conference every year. It's around February, March, and it deliberates on all the burning issues that affect women and girls around the world. It then comes to agreement on, like last year, we had an agreement on ending violence against women. And member states agreed on a strong plan of implementation to end violence against women through specific and targeted measures on uh, prevention of violence, protection, on prosecution of perpetrators, and provision of services to victims and survivors of violence. So that is the kind of thing that really uh, needs a lot of preparation in terms of advocacy, talking to member states here in New York, visiting. I've just come back from uh, being in the field. I was uh, in uh, Egypt uh, to attend an Arab League meeting, getting the Arab League. You know, it's a very traditional 
uh, and, and uh, patriarchal society where women's rights have not been recognized for a long, long time and there are uh, cultural, religious and tradition related barriers. So going there and getting them to buy in and to bring about a change in those societies, those are the kind of things that we engage in. And then, uh, you know, when we see the actual results, it's wonderful. So this is what a typical day uh, is like, advocating, trying to push uh, and build alliances with member states, but also with civil society and young people. You know, I, I uh, was very happy to visit Edinburgh to attend the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl uh, Scouts and uh, to address, for example, young people like you. And uh, of course, young women most of all. What is it like to be a woman working for the UN across countries with different cultural expectations of women? Well, I've, I've been a diplomat all my life and I have lived in different countries. And um, even coming from India, we learn to be diverse, uh, to speak to diversity. So I have always been able to communicate with and relate to the different cultural contexts that the UN is uh, always engaged in, in uh, either addressing or changing. What was life like when you were in your high school? And what was your dream job then? Well, um, you know, I, I belong to the po first uh, post-independent generation uh, in India. You know that India became uh, independent in 1947. And I went to high school in the 1960s. So it was a wonderful period where women, uh, young girls were uh, open to go into any profession and it was encouraged. You know, our freedom movement had been very much about women's empowerment and their participation in, in the struggle. So it was really wonderful to be able to have the option to do many things. And uh, I unfortunately or fortunately went to a all girls school. So um, it was, uh, it was uh, a bit of a, my daughters always say that I grew up like a nun because I went to a convent school. So, uh, but it was, uh, you know, academically very stimulating. I wanted to be a doctor and therefore I was always very fired with um, uh, two uh, sorts of ambitions. One is to do academically very well and the other is to, uh, you know, follow my passion of uh, Indian classical dance. Who inspired you when you were in school and who inspires you now? I didn't get that. Can I have that question again? So, who inspired you when you were in school and who inspires you now? Oh, well, you know, as I said, there were many heroines of the Indian freedom movement, but the heroine closest to home, I think for most of us, is our mother. And my mother, who was born in 1907, uh, was a real feminist, a very strong feminist. And she inculcated in me all the values of feminism and continued through her life to inspire me. But apart from her, there was another uh, person, uh, another woman who, who really inspired me at several levels. She was a freedom fighter. Uh, she was also known as the Nightingale of India because she was a poetess. And I have a very strong, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of weakness for poetry. So uh, it was a wonderful combination of a powerful woman, but speaking through poetry as well. Um, and then uh, Indira Gandhi, because Indira Gandhi, as I was growing up in my 
teen years uh, particularly and late teens, uh, uh, she was a role model. So I, I think all of this, and uh, right now and all through uh, my career, I have been inspired by both men and women who have really fought out there in the trenches, in the battlefields for gender equality and women's empowerment. Because men and women have both fought it. And in India, uh, I have seen it. I have seen it in other countries. And every time, and I cannot specifically, and it's good that I don't have one specific heroine or, or someone that I look up to today, but that there are so many out there who are fighting for justice, what we, what we call gender justice. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is Equality for Women, Progress for All. How can women drive progress for all? Oh, you cannot but uh, rely on the power of women and girls to change the world, to drive progress. Just because, you know, as, as uh, Amartya Sen says, it's a no-brainer. Half the world's population consists of women and girls. And if they, ca they are not empowered, if they suffer discrimination, poverty, uh, economic disempowerment, then we will never have progress. We can never overcome uh, poverty. We will never be able to eradicate poverty. And because uh, nearly 70% of the world's women, 70% uh, uh, of the world's poor are women in developing countries. So if you take them out of poverty, these women, by giving them the capabilities, the access to resources that enable them <clears throat> to uh, get out of poverty, give them decent jobs, workforce participation, then you are able to make sure that poverty is reduced in 70% of the population. So you can calculate how much poverty would be overall reduced and what kind of in economic progress the world can make. And it's true in terms of food security, agriculture. You look at uh, environment. If women and girls are able to play a strong role in terms of environmental sustainability, they will really uh, make the change happen. And, and to fight against climate change, so many things, you can do it. As a young woman, we are taught to be resilient. Can you tell us some, can you tell us some of the times when you've had to be resilient? Well, um, as you will realize, um, you know, when, when you are uh, at a strategic uh, place in your life, when you are going into a profession, a job, uh, when you are going into relationships, marriage, there, is, there are so many times that test you, that test you in terms of your strength, your ability to bounce back despite setbacks, and it happens. It happens within the family, it happens in, in the co uh, course of your profession. And I've had several uh, crises, but I've always tried to uh, remember that I'm relatively privileged can, compared to so many other people in the world, and that I have been blessed uh, with uh, the opportunity to do so much for so many in my own small way, but also that I've been blessed in a wonderful family, and that it's my duty to them and to those I serve to be strong. And my mother used to always say, and that's, that's my mantra for resilience, my mother always used to say that we have to disprove the fact that, or, or the perception or the myth that women are weak. In fact, women are the strongest have the greatest power of equanimity. And that's what I think is, is very, very important for all of you as well.
to remember. One of our learning pillars at Blackheath High School is enterprise. What advice would you give to girls at school on how to succeed on the world stage in the global community? Well, first of all, enterprise is a state of mind. Uh, you know, I, I always uh, like this concept of an ideas entrepreneur. So, and it's never too early to start. So, start being the ideas entrepreneur and then go on to be an entrepreneur of goods and products and uh, ways to do things better. And uh, certainly, we in UN Women put a lot of store on supporting the enterprise and entrepreneurship of women and girls. Thank you for taking time to, for us to interview you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Same Bye. to you.